Uh, good to be with you. Thank you, Penny. Thanks, thanks for what you do. I, I, look, I learned a long time ago that good things don't just happen. If you want to accomplish anything that matters, anything of meaning or significance, you got to be willing to get in the game and take the risk associated with getting in the game. And so let me just say thanks for, for doing just that. Um, uh, this is a just a tremendous organization that fights for the values that made this country the greatest nation in history. And so we appreciate that. And when you take that risk, you know, I mean, it's a risk because you're going to get ridiculed. The press is going to say all kinds of bad things about conservatives, people who believe in the sanctity of life and marriage and family and lower taxes and, and, and the things we all care about. Um, they're just, they're going to they're gonna criticize us. And we just know that's part of the game when you get in it. So thank you for doing that. Um, but I mean, we all understand that. And we all understand that the, the mainstream press doesn't think the way normal people think. Um, <laughs> any of you ever read Cal Thomas? I mean, he's a wonderful Christian syndicated columnist. He has a great line when he's talking about the way normal Americans see things and the way the New York Times and the Washington Post sees things. And he, uh, he says this, he says, I get up every morning, I read my Bible and the New York Times so I can see what each side's up to. And you know, a lot of truth to that. So uh, thank you for what you're doing. We are at a critical moment as, as uh, hopefully soon to be Senator Berg uh, says, we're at one of those, those special moments in American history, uh, defining moments in American history. Um, I would go back to scripture and say one of those Esther moments where certain people are here for such a time as this. And it's critical we recognize that and we're willing to stand up and fight for the things that matter. And I, I've said, you know, I, our country faces three big challenges. We got the terrorist threat, we got the economic concerns, and we got the debate in our culture over whose set of values are going to prevail. All three are important. We got to win all three. Um, and the reason we got to win all three is because we want the United States to continue to be the leading country in the world. I mean, the world's a safer and better place when the United States leads. And so we got to deal with all three challenges. And the third one, the values debate, I would argue in many ways it's, it's just as important, maybe more important than the other two. Because if we can't win on the values debate, we may not have the toughness that it takes to win on the economic concerns and on the terrorist challenge as well. So thank you for uh, what you're doing there. I want to just finish with this thing that we're pushing right now. Uh, this fiscal situation we face, again, it's, it's, and I would argue it's a values issue. It's just plain immoral to continue to spend more than you take in and send the bill to the next generation. Um, so we have got to get a handle on this. The leverage associated with this debt ceiling uh, is, is our best opportunity to put in place the fiscal changes that need to be there so that we can put our country on a, on a path that's actually sustainable. And so we are advocating as conservatives in the House and in the Senate. I, I, did Senator DeMint, he just spoke to you as well. So Jim may have mentioned this as well. Um, what we call cut cap and balance. Cut spending now, cap it as a percentage of GDP going forward, and use this rare opportunity for the first time in American history to pass a balanced budget amendment to the House, to the Senate, send it out to the states for ratification. Be the first time in the history of the Republic we've actually done that. Um, and, and again, this is, is, is an Esther moment where we have to be willing to say, let's, let's use the leverage we have to get a balanced budget amendment through the House and the Senate and send to the states for ratification. It is, it is simply that big. And um, John Fund and I had the opportunity, we, we both spoke at a um, luncheon with a group of um, constitutional Tea Party folks in Columbus, Ohio over the weekend. And he made a great point. Um, he said uh, every third generation in America has faced big challenges. You think about the guys who started the place, put their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor on the line, started this grand experiment, liberty we call America. Three generations later, it was the, it was the generation that um, ended slavery and held the union together. Three generations after that, it was the group of Americans who said we will, who lived through the Great Depression and dealt with the Second World War. And now here we are three generations later, facing the biggest fiscal challenges the nation has ever seen. And our task is to rise to the occasion and, and do everything we can to make sure we fix it and, and live up to the example set by previous generations of Americans. And if we do, uh, we can look to that, my favorite verse in scripture, 2 Timothy 4, 7, where Paul tells Timothy, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. And that's our charge as citizens, to do just that, to fight the fight, finish the course, keep the faith, and put in place the things that will make sure we still have the greatest nation in history. So you guys are involved in that in a big way, and we appreciate it here, and uh, appreciate all the help you give the Republican Study Committee and conservatives here on Capitol Hill. So keep up the great work. Thank you.